So I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I think at this point in my life, I practically live and breathe caffeine. Like not only did I only get two hours of sleep last night, but I also made a video this morning about the new Spy Llamas, and I'm also making a video right now about the new patch, and I'm also gonna be streaming at twitch.tv slash- Okay, I'm gonna stop that. Uh, hey guys, welcome to the new video. Today, unlike my previous video where I went over uh, the new llamas and weapons and stuff, today's video is going to be pretty much everything you need to know about patch version 12. 12.10 for Fortnite Save the World. It's basically going to be going past a lot of the surface level stuff that I explained in my video this morning. I mean, all we really did was a llama opening. Uh, today's video is going to be cut up into a few different categories. We're going to be going over a new leaked weapon set, which is entirely different from the new Spec Ops set that we just got, aka the Military Set 2.0. Uh, we also got a lot of locker news to go over, a lot of different uh, nitty gritty details that you might not know, as well as a few things upcoming. Uh, some new heroes we got to talk about, some stuff that's been leaked in the game files and a little bit of speculation from not too long ago as well as some new weapons that are going to be coming out as well as some stuff that is leaked on top of that uh, which is separate from the weapon set that I just mentioned and aside from that some bug fixes and stuff uh, today's video is basically just all the nitty-gritty details a little bit of more in-depth than my previous one if you guys haven't watched my previous one I was opening I think 12 of the new spy llamas go check that out if you want to kind of like a first look of the new patch um, aside from that let's go ahead and jump into the video just want to give a quick shout out to my man Josh over on Twitter for using my code at gfuel. Appreciate your face, man. And let's go and jump into the video, start talking about a lot of the new details that have arisen and just kind of, well, do exactly what I just said. Okay, so as with my normal news videos, I always try to get the most important information out of the way first. So for this video, we're going to be talking about the leaked weapons, then move on to the leaked heroes, then move on to some of the locker details and news, and then move on to the bug fixes for this most recent patch. Um, I know not everybody can watch a video all the way to the end, which you totally should so I'm trying to get the most important information to your brains so that you can remember it and talk about it to somebody else if they care remotely um, so to start the video off we're gonna talk about an entirely new leaked weapon set now this comes from Jacoco on Twitter he said already the next weapon set I checked and this is not the weapon set that just released now with the way that this was leaked this has happened with many weapon sets in the past where we don't have the PNGs we only have the file names this has happened with the bows this happened with the military set 2.0 the Fleming set or the Spec Ops set, and it also happened with the Mythic Storm King weapons. So we definitely know that this will make its way into the game, judging by history. So it's only a matter of time before we really figure out what this weapon set's going to be about, but it's the Art Deco set, and I'm probably saying that wrong, but I didn't even know what this was until I had to, you know, have somebody explain it to me on Twitter, and then I later googled it. But we have an Assault Break, a Shotgun Break, a Launcher, Pistol Revolver, Sniper, and Shotgun, all part of the Art Deco set. And Normally when they have a name like that, that's kind of a code name, uh, just how the military set 2.0 was called the Fleming set. This is a little bit of a code name. Now I ended up looking it up and apparently Art Deco is short for Arts Decostrafe and it's characterized by rich colors, bold geometry, and de decadent, decadent, decadent detail work. I cannot speak English. Having reached the height of its popularity in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, the style brings in glamour, luxury, and order with symmetrical designs and exuberant shapes. And I ended up Googling it and, you know, Google Images, my best friend. I've definitely seen this kind of art style before, but definitely makes me a little bit reminiscent of like a spy movie or something, which we do have a spy set right now, so it could be in addition to what we already have. Um, basically, you know, like the uh, tactical assault rifle, the AK, and stuff like that. Or it could be a mafia-styled weapon set because I ended up looking it up and the American Mafia was actually founded in the 1920s and this art style definitely does make me think of the Mafia so perhaps you know the revolver that it talks about could be a Smith & Wesson the shotgun could be a Remington shotgun uh, the assault rifle could maybe be a Thompson or like another you know type of Tommy gun who knows we will know in the future what this is but for right now all we have is the code name and the file names and we can only speculate but we do know there is a whole new weapon set in the works now moving on from that we actually have a weapon Weapon that we can actually see and see the stats on and the PNG in the game files. It is called the Instigator, and it is the new military set 2.0 bow and arrow or the Spec Ops bow and arrow. And from the looks of it, you might have like tracking arrows that you can control similar to the tiny instrument of death looks like it has a little laser pointer and it has like a laser at the end of the arrow so maybe you shoot it and then you can move the arrow mid kind of path by looking around I don't know 
Um, but of course, another bow and arrow. I'm sure we're all kind of bored of them by now. But, you know, as long as they release it and it's good at launch and they don't have to fix it or buff it later, then I'm chilling. Um, aside from that, we actually have a weapon that was officially announced by Epic Games and wasn't leaked. And that's actually the Steampunk bow. Yes, I know, another bow and arrow. Comes out tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern at the reset. Of course, as always, we will be streaming this on Twitch. If you guys want to go over there and hang out with us, I would definitely appreciate your faces. Uh, but yeah, we'll be maxing this out, checking it out not exactly sure at all what this thing does but it is a steampunk bow now that's pretty much it for the weapons now i kind of want to move on to the heroes because this next bit of information is a huge piece of information so this actually came out from fire monkey ended up tweeting it myself uh, i said director riggs was added as a placeholder hero will we be able to play as him soon now director riggs of course is the guy that talks during the storm king fight and he's basically like the guy at home base you know you got you got the major and he's basically in charge of war games and stuff but like whenever i hear you know see the director he's like the guy at home base right i don't really play with dialogue on so i don't really like remember how much he talks but he's the director you could see the picture of him you know who he is um basically from the looks of it he will be a playable constructor in the future and this is big news because this kind of opens up uh opens up the avenue for other characters what if we can play clip what if we can play the major what if we can play lars in the future all of these people are people that we find at home base will they soon become playable heroes who knows will director riggs ever be playable who knows but he is a placeholder right now he has his own text like his own like motto it says go riggs or go home so it's looking possible but it could you know it could just be epic games testing stuff now moving on from that i do want to bring this uh, little bit of piece of information up a little bit of speculation now, this is something that we've talked about a long time ago but the same art team that ended up making bomb squad kyle for the save the world team ended up making two other concept arts they made a concept art for a quote modern military sarah as you can see on screen and they also made a concept art for teddy team leader now you guys cannot tell me that these two heroes would fit perfectly or wouldn't fit perfectly in the spec ops set the military set 2.0 Something tells me that we are going to see these two heroes come out sometime during the season in the event shop or the weekly store because their their designs are just too good and, and they, they, they perfectly fit in well, you know, with the weapon set that just released. So I, I figured I'd mention it as a little bit of speculation. Nothing's confirmed at the moment. This concept art has existed for months, but I figured I'd mention it because it's very well made and I'd be surprised if the Save the World team did not take advantage of this. Now, moving on from that, let's move on to some locker details. Now, start off with the locker details we had a very important reddit post come out from somebody by the name of u slash ntp black and basically it says you can check what hero people are using in the social tabs basically the reason that this was made is because currently in game with the new skin system that has come out you cannot tell who you know how what commander right people are playing unless you go into your party channel and look at you know you have to pause the game click at the top left and then you're able to see the people in your game and the commander they're playing in my opinion this is very stupid and there should be like a, a, a image of the commander that you know your teammates are playing as and it should be at the top left next to their health bar just like battle royale does with the skins you know if your buddy's playing the galaxy skin you'll see a picture of the galaxy skin guy at the top left next to his health bar why didn't they do that with commanders i don't know is that a feature that's coming in the future i hope so but the fact that you need to pause your game just to check who's playing who is kind of frustrating but you still are able to do it nonetheless for those of you guys that are worried that you have some arc jesses that are lurking about now moving on from that we have a little bit of information about the locker that you might not know i ended up tweeting this out as soon as the servers came on crossover skins including the nfl skins are usable and save the world and this is something that i've been preaching since day one a lot of people thought that license issues were going to be you know occurring between br and save the world which to me i've always said from day one that makes zero sense because fortnite is fortnite battle royale is not a separate game from save the world it is a separate game mode so whenever you're creating these deals you know to do these crossovers you're probably allowing it for fortnite not fortnite battle royale why would you limit a crossover to only one game mode for a while there was a text under the nfl skins that said 
said not usable in Save the World, but when that ended up coming out, I also said that I felt like that was a bug and just some misplaced text, um, because a lot of people were freaking out, you know, what if we're not able to use any of the crossover skins in Save the World, but you can indeed use the NFL ones, you can use all the other ones, I just think that that text at the time was accidentally misplaced from the normal starter packs, because if you were to buy a Battle Royale starter pack, it would say, note, some of these items aren't usable in Save the World, and I feel as though that that text on that skin was accidentally placed there while they were trying to do something else. Lo and behold though, all crossover skins are allowed in Save the World. NFL, Star Wars, Batman, you know, DC, any of that kind of stuff is usable in Save the World. You have nothing to worry about there. Now moving on from this, I ended up getting a tweet from my friend John. Uh, you know, I was talking about the locker and all this other kind of stuff. He ended up saying, so what about the feature that Mad just said that we would all love regardless of how we felt about the locker? And a while ago, Mad just ended up talking about some kind of quality of life improvement during one of the Reddit posts or something like that. And for those of you guys that don't know, uh, I ended up responding to him. I said, I think being able to select the styles of previous rarities with heroes is what Magis was alluding to. If you guys don't know any of the heroes in the game that you have, you can actually, in their save the world heroes specifically, not skins, you're actually able to select any rarity and any style for them if they are available. Figured I might mention this for those of you guys that might not have skins, but you want extra customization. Very easily done with a lot of the heroes in save the world. And moving on from that, the last little bit of locker news that I have is about reactive cosmetics. Epic Games had this to comment. They said home base is still working on support for reactive cosmetics. There's some reactives that have no parallel in Save the World and simply won't react, such as Stratus and the Backtrack or Backbling. However, we still intend to create parallel functionality where we can. So for any of you guys that are curious about like reactive pickaxes or reactive skins or anything like that, they are working on them and not all of them are implemented yet. So in case you like some reactive stuff, that's some good news for you. Lastly, to end this video off, we have some bug fix stuff that was talked about in the home base status report. They start things off by saying players unable to collect items using the interact key has been fixed. This was a big one for a lot of people. Uh, players unable to revive themselves while down but not out. The Xbox controller d-pad and analog sticks becoming unresponsive in the armory tab and the UI becoming unresponsive after opening the friends menu panel. Dude that happened to me so many times on stream. You could actually do slash join and join on a friend of yours and if they were in battle royale you could literally leave your game or your menu go to battle royale and then it'd be fixed. But I'm actually glad that that ended up being fixed. But aside from that, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. That is all the information that I have on this newest patch. Every single nitty gritty detail, leak, little bit of information has now been compiled into this video. Um, I guess the only other thing that I could mention is that the energy traps got fixed and they're, you know, they're properly doing the damage numbers that they should. That's probably the last thing that I can mention. I saw it in Chetik's video, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. I really apologize if this video was super omega long. I try not to do that, but we did have a few things to talk about in today's video. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time.